Hi everyone, how are you? Um, sorry that my post is a little bit later than what I would normally like to post. Um, but I was out all day with my daughter and it was exhausting. But definitely well worth it. We had a great time. Went to the park, we had lunch with a friend, took went to Barnes and Nobles, got her a bilingual book. I'm hoping to teach her to speak in English and in Spanish. We'll see how it goes. But it's definitely, definitely tiring. Um, which brings me to today's topic, which is taking time for yourself, me time. Um, days like today, when you've given so much of yourself to someone else, and not that I don't give of myself every day to my daughter when I'm home, it's just that at home we're in a routine, and um, it just seems easier than t going out. But um, today my Jovi Wisdom on Instagram, the quote that inspired me was, sometimes you just need to disconnect and enjoy your own company. And my journey with taking time for myself was definitely um, a long one. I come from a very big family. Uh, we were raised in a three family home our doors were not hardly ever unlocked um, locked. they were always unlocked we were in and out of each other's homes and on the block that I grew up in in Brooklyn it was pretty much family um, a family member lived two houses down from me a family member lived across the street um, on one corner and then across the street on another corner um, and then we had um, family members in the middle of the block and a couple of blocks down <laughs> and every night um, while my grandmother was alive all of the ladies from the neighborhood <laughs> would come to my house and play bingo and I used to play too it was a ton of fun but you know I being raised around so many people you don't really know what it's like to really enjoy your own company and I struggled with it for a really long time I mean I'll tell you, my cousins and I did everything together. Everything. Um, we would go shopping together, we would go to the store together, to the corner store to buy stuff. Um, we went to school together. <laughs> we spent weekends together. So, when I moved to Denver is when I really learned how to be alone. I still have not mastered going to the movies alone, but I have mastered going out to eat alone. Um, which is ironic, right? Because it would be easier to go to the movies by yourself. Um, I've enjoyed, I've learned to enjoy staying home by myself. I have learned to enjoy going shopping completely alone. Um, not needing advice from anyone on anything that I purchased. And I found joy in it. In that solitude. Um, but now that I have... Um, two kids, one on the way. I kind of want that sense of family back, but I don't want to lose time for myself. And I want to be able to share how I do that. How do I make time for myself? Well, the first thing is um, you, you have to be diligent about it. You have to say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it today and it's going to happen. <laughs> Come hell or high water, it's happening. And that's what happened to me yesterday. Yesterday I was so tired and so exhausted because my daughter took two hours to take her second afternoon nap, which is usually her longest nap. And as soon as my husband came home, I said to him, you know something, I really, really need you after dinner to take her and not bother me and I'm going to close the bedroom door and I meditated that's something that I definitely practice I meditate I practice transcendental meditation and in another um, video post I'll share what that is because it's definitely a different way of meditating and it needs to be explained in detail um, and just those 10 minutes that I took for myself made the world of a difference you know you have to you have to realize when your body is telling you that you need that time and for me it's usually in my back my back tenses up and it feels kind of achy and 
you just need to be very I don't want to say selfish because it's not being selfish taking time for yourself and taking care of yourself so that you can be a better person for others is not being selfish at all but you you know you have you have to want to make yourself a priority and that's the most important thing that I can tell you about taking time for yourself. And it could be five minutes. I tell you, my husband is probably the best person to be an example of me time. He's like clockwork. He comes home from work. And he changes. He says hi to us, of course. But he changes. And he takes his time changing. <laughs> and he goes to the bathroom. And he plays his video games. And he relaxes. And I mean, obviously, he's using the bathroom. Men take a long time in the bathroom. I have no idea. Um, but that's his time and I respect that time and I find it harder for me and I don't know if it's because of how I was raised or it's because I'm a woman and that's just how we are um, wired but I, ha I find it very difficult to do that to take my time doing things take my time changing and all that other stuff that um, I used to take for granted when I was single and living on my own um so i found a post on pinterest that i will share also in my um jovi wisdom page on facebook and it's um 23 smart ways to sneak me time into your day and i'm just gonna read off of it so excuse me if i'm not looking at the camera the first thing you need to do is schedule it. I can't stress that enough. Definitely, if you can schedule it, schedule it. Do it. Um, I have to be a little bit more flexible in my scheduling. Um, meditate. I do that. I meditate. Um, another thing that it says is to go to the library, feed the ducks, take a class, wake up early. I definitely wake up earlier than my husband and my daughter do. I wake up an hour before they do so that I can have time to meditate in the morning. Um, I journal. So here's one journal. Um, this is my daughter's journal, my, do my journal to her. Um, and it's just things that, I, that come up. Like if she and I have a bad day, I don't tell her about it, but I take what I've learned from that, from that day and I write to her about it. Um, I tell her the story of you know when she was first born and the story of her first Christmas just little memories so that when she's a teenager and she doesn't want to really talk to me <laughs> there's things that she can read in here that's advice um, or you know if whenever it's my time to go when I pass away she'll have something from me and that's I consider that me time because it's something that I'm doing mostly for myself in spreading my knowledge and wisdom to her and it calms me down especially like if I've had those bad days with her where I'm like oh my god I'm gonna rip my hair out <laughs> it helps me reflect and then I have another journal and it's my prayer journal I write my prayers down um, and I have found this to be more meaningful to me when it comes to praying and this is a way that I have my me time and I do this in the morning, not every day, I don't do it every day, but every few days in the week, maybe every other day, I would say I would do it three days a week for sure, um, that I write in either journal. Journal. So I wake up early and I do that. It's hard to wake up early, but it's worth it because that's the time that I have for myself and that's the time that you have for yourself. I used to work out every morning, um, so I would meditate work out and then I'd enjoy my cup of coffee <laughs> by myself and that was really that's pro that's probably a treat when I can do all of that <laughs> at one time using apps you know Pinterest is definitely a me time thing um, after they've gone to bed I look on Pinterest for my quote for the next day um, pictures, things that I want to do, activities for Rebecca and I to do throughout the day when we're home, um, decorating idea, organization ideas. So if you guys want to follow me on Pinterest, you're more than welcome to as well. I have some things up there. Grocery shop online. I don't really know how I feel about that. I really like going to the grocery store. Um, 
I don't know why, but I enjoy it. Um, stop saying you don't have time because you make time for what you want to make time for. And if you keep putting yourself on the back burner, guess what? People are going to put you on the back burner. In order for people to make you a priority, you have to make yourself a priority. So stop saying you don't have time. Take a long lunch. That one's a hard one because sometimes, you know, you can't take a long lunch. Make wait time recharge time. So while you're waiting at the doctor's office, you're always waiting at the doctor's office, right? So take that time that while you're waiting to do something for yourself. Read a book, look at an app. Um, make a me time list. So make a, a list of all the things that you wanna do for yourself. Um, go pretend shopping. I do that. <laughs> I do that online a lot. <laughs> I go pretend shopping. I even put it in the cart. It makes me feel really good. <laughs> Simplify your stuff. Make the most of your commute. You know, some people's commute is, is long. My husband's commute is about 40 minutes. So we're looking for audio books. He'll listen. He likes to listen to books on audio. I do not. I'm an avid reader and I need a book in my hands. Um, but that's making the most of it. Listen to a TED Talk. I used to do that when I worked. I listened to TED Talks. Walk instead of driving. Instead of taking a shower, take a bath. Make cleaning fun. You know something? Cleaning has definitely become a me time thing. I wake up before them, Saturday morning or Sunday morning, depending. And I clean. I put the music on. They're both heavy sleepers, thank God. And that's the time that I take to clean my house and it's it's really nice when it's all done and they haven't woken up yet and I can have my cup of coffee <laughs> um, skip making the bed oh I have a hard time with that I like to make the bed but if that saves you time in the morning so that you can have some me time then definitely skip making the bed get a manicure during your lunch break or take a drink run I used to sip wine on my balcony when I lived in Denver by myself all alone it was nice um another thing that I do that's not on this list I know it says to go to the library but what's on what isn't on the list is books I like to read a lot of books right now my books I'll share two of them with you are um, mom parenting related books this book is called the conscious parent by Dr. Shafali Sabari she was um, featured on Oprah's TV network there's actually a course that you can buy to go with this book and it has a workbook and everything and this book has really helped me step up as a parent and realize that um, my kids are not on this earth like for my sole purpose they're here on their own journey on their own purpose and I'm just their guide to that purpose um, and there's a lot of stuff in here I might pull some quotes or thoughts that I get from reading these books but this is something that I do for me time another one right now the happiest toddler on the block I just started this one I I'm reading both at the same time it's hard but um, this one came first, and I was hoping to have this one done before Rebecca was born. Did not happen. And then I got this one when she became a toddler, when she turned one. Because those years are definitely hard ones. Um, so reading is something that I do to have my me time. Let me know what are some things you do to take me time. Three things that I do for me time. I meditate, I read books, and I journal. So let me know a couple of things that you do so that I can add it to my me time list. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video blog for today regarding me time. Just to recap, me time is important. And if you don't make time for yourself, then why should anyone else? Think about that one. If you don't make time for you, then why should someone else make time for you? You have to give yourself your worth and your value. And the way that you do that is by becoming your own best friend. So thank you all so much for joining me. And I can't wait to read the comments about what you all do for your me time. Have a great night.